Now today's session is on Reality Kit and AR Quick Look for Business. These are two really exciting technologies that Apple announced a few years ago, and I don't think these got quite the amount of attention that they needed. Uh, maybe a year or two, we did do a session on Reality Kit, but we've never covered AR Quick Look, which is actually even easier to use than Reality Kit because it does all the work for you. Uh, and so if you're a business owner, if you're a developer, if you're a marketer, if you're anyone who is interested in AR, or maybe uh, you have no idea, well, again, this is going to be the easiest way for you to get into AR in a way that matters because there's a lot of ways to start working with this technology, but there's very few methods that allow you to deploy it and your customers to use it or your fans to experience it. So that's what I'm teaching you today. We're gonna to teach you how to build one of these experiences, how to work with dot reality files, how to use the reality composer, and uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be a really, really great session today. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Again, thank you all for joining. I really do appreciate anyone who's watching right now. Uh, and so again, here's a quick overview directly from my website of what I think you can do with AR Quick Look or just in general, the technology of AR VR. So your customers could tease themselves with holograms of your entire menu your students could experience science and history instead of reading about it. And your building could provide a new layer of interaction for every visitor. So again, this is kind of amb ambiguous, yet at the same time, it kind of feels like you know what I'm talking about. And so I'm actually going to show you these examples a little bit later on. We have some live demos. Uh, but again, just remember this little concept here that it's going to be very, very easy to share holograms with people. And I think right now it already is very easy, but people don't realize it. So I think after uh, WWDC 23 this year, definitely more people will have attention on these types of files and these types of experiences. And if you're a business owner, it's really easy to integrate. Uh, and again, all your customers who use iPhone or iPad or any of those objects uh, will definitely enjoy the experience that they have when they visit your website. So let's go ahead to our next slide here. If you haven't joined this meetup today, if today is your first time joining again, thank you so much. I really do appreciate you. AR Today or Augmented Reality Today is my meetup. I started it on my birthday back in 2018. Uh, just under that, you'll see Near Future Marketing Inc. That's the name of my business. And so under that, there's a picture of me. But um, basically, I started Near Future Marketing as a business. Uh, so I was a self-taught programmer, built all these different apps. Eventually, I realized, hey, it'd be a great idea if I actually branded this and created a business around it and really you know, gave myself an identity versus just being Casey Pollock. So Near Future Marketing is the name of my company. And from that company, again, back in 2018, I created this meetup called AR Today so that I could teach other people how cool AR is, how easy it is to set up, and again, just share this knowledge because I, as a self-taught developer, I spend a lot of time just experimenting, and there's always these great things that I learned that I'm like, wow, this really isn't that hard. I wish I could show other people. That's where the meetup came. So again, thank you so much for joining. I think I saw today we have uh, at least 11 people who are attending this event for the first time. They've never been to our meetup. So again, I really do appreciate you, and. Uh, Definitely just keep coming because there's so much more that I can't wait to share later this year. And in that theme, I think there's an animation here. There we go. Let's meet at WWDC 23. So in our last meetup, I brought up the fact that uh, I was invited again to WWDC 23 this year. Uh, really exciting experience for those of you who don't know this is apple's worldwide developers conference it happens once a year this is where they announce things like the new versions of ios maybe new macbooks or maybe some other type of hardware uh, so it's a really exciting event this year i don't like to speak on rumors but i will say it's they're always advancing augmented reality let's just say that they're always pushing ar to the next level year over year over year I personally think that AR has really been moving at Apple's pace, and I think that uh, the industry is about to get a huge boost in the software and whatever else happens on Monday. So 
I'm really excited about it. I will be there all day. I'll also be checking in early on Sunday. So if you're going to be at the event or if you're in California, if you're in Cupertino area, please, you know, hit me up. Let's meet up. You can add me on LinkedIn uh, or email me directly. Um, but I would love to meet at the actual event with anyone who is watching these meetups. So, yeah, definitely, please, let's link up. Uh, another bit of great news, the AR Today virtual store is available now. So we've been talking about this for quite some time now. And again, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I pushed it back. I worked on the store. I rearranged it. I had to be like an architect, so I redesigned the architecture of the store and the scenery and the greenery and the sky and the clothes. So it was a lot of work for myself, but fortunately, it was approved for sale yesterday morning and it's a free app so it's not even for sale just download it for free but again this is a huge moment for our meetup we started back in 2018 i never took the time to create an app just for the meetup uh it's a free meetup so you know again i don't really make anything by doing these meetups but i'm so happy to have a physical location to share with everyone who's a member i think we're at about 717 members right now so Again, thank you so much. I remember when it was literally zero people, and now there's 700 members. Uh, so check out the AR Today virtual store. It's in the App Store today. And again, you can access all of our swag from the store. Uh, I was going to do a live demo. We did a live demo maybe two meetups ago. So rather than a live demo of the store, here's some cool screenshots just so you can get a slight idea of what I'm talking about here. And so what the AR Today virtual store is for the people who haven't been here before, it's actually a handheld VR app for your iPhone. So this is built natively on top of AR Kit. I maybe spent about 10 months working on this on and off. So, you know, it really was a passion project. I really didn't rush it out. And there actually are a lot of ideas that I didn't get to squeeze into this version 1.0, but that's okay. It was really, really important for me to release this app before WWDC 23. So now that it's out there, it's in the App Store, it's only going to go up from here. Uh, and again, here's just some more screenshots so you can see what it kind of looks like inside the store. But it's best experience on your iPhone walking around the store. Um, what's really cool about, cool about it, again, is it's a handheld VR app. You don't have to strap it to your face, but because it's built natively, ideally, it's going to be compatible with any future augmented reality capable devices. But for the devices that you have right now, you can use it on iPhone, iPad, you can use it on older iPhones. I really tried to make this as accessible as possible. Uh, so I really worked really hard to optimize it and make sure that this will work. Uh, again, there will be future updates that make the app load a lot faster, uh, maybe add some more fashion items in there. Uh, really, really cool store here, but please check it out. Again, this is a free meetup, so if you ever feel like you would like to support the meetup please just download the virtual store app buy some swag you'll get a laptop sleeve you'll get a phone case a shirt a sweater a hoodie uh, there's water bottles there's mouse pads so i spent a lot of time working on this and i'm really excited about what this will turn into into the future all right uh so services so again, the name of my business, Near Future Marketing, and I have a few different services I offer. I've never really marketed them to the meetup. I just kind of put them on my website. So I figured today it's worth mentioning branded AR, VR effects or social media. So whether it's TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, these type of effects you're probably already familiar with. And I actually was a very early beta tester of Spark AR is what it's called now. But definitely, I have a lot of experience doing this. So if you would like to create branded AR, VR effects for your business uh, or just maybe for a birthday special event, let us know. We can definitely work on you, work with you on that. I also, if you don't know, I have more than 20 apps in the App Store. So I have a wide range of apps, sticker apps, Apple Watch apps, AR apps, VR apps. Uh, so again, if you're a business and you are interested in having a branded AR VR app and you're not too sure of you know, where you can find the best developer, I'm right here. Uh, so definitely, again, check out our website, nearfuture.marketing slash services. You can learn more about our branded AR VR app service and also book a free consultation. That's kind of the, the real key here is please book a free consultation. 
And then for all the normal people out there who don't own a business, but you're still super interested in AR, VR, again, we host this meetup at the cadence that I can. So maybe it's once a month, maybe it's twice a month, but I do also offer personal tutoring and private sessions. So this is ideally aimed at children for the personal tutoring but if you're an adult don't worry i don't discriminate i can teach you as well um, but ideally we also have private lessons so if you are let's say maybe a business or a school i can actually come in and teach for up to four hours i've done it before um, all about ar vr i'll provide you all the code the templates the the slides like i'm doing today so basically it's like a private meetup just for your business or just for your child so if you're interested in that again you can find out more information at nearfuture.marketing slash services. All right, and then this is my last ask here, volunteering. So if you haven't noticed, I do 100% of this on my own. I started the meetup on my own. I built my website on my own. I code all my own apps. I record all my own videos. I do all the graphic design. These slides I designed as well. So I could really use a hand. So uh, volunteering is a really great way to get started in a meetup. For me personally, I got started volunteering for other meetups and that's how I eventually decided to create my own meetup. But through volunteering, I had so many unique opportunities. I've had free gifts, I've had rare speaking opportunities like speaking at places like UC Berkeley or San Jose State. Uh, I was actually paid to speak at some of those places just because people attended my meetups before and they realized like, hey, this would be a great thing to pay someone to do for our students. So if you're interested in helping and volunteering, again, I can teach you how to code, no problem. I'll do that for free. Uh, you'll probably get some access to some exclusive events and conferences as I have in the past. And as I mentioned, you may run into some paid work here and there. So please go ahead and email me, volunteer at nearfuture.marketing. Really need the help and I would really appreciate it. Um, and again, I would help you out however I can. All right, and so just some quick notes, and oh, I was like, Where, what's this? Helpful links, yeah, so helpful links. Again, this is being recorded currently. Uh, yep, we're still recording. So as long as everything works okay, this should be posted on YouTube later today. Again, this is my first time ever streaming directly on YouTube, so I may have to edit it a little bit, uh, but I think so far so good. It doesn't look like anything's broken yet. <laughs> Uh, so we have a few links that we'll go over. There's the AR creation tools, there's the Apple events, there's the AR quick look gallery, and there's even the reality kit documentation, uh, and of course my website. So we'll check out all of these things. But before we do that, I'm going to show you how to get to these links because I've actually uploaded a PDF that has all of these links, or more specifically, all of these slides, all in one PDF. So let's go ahead and hit next. Excuse me, I have a few. Burps. All right, there we go. I'll get, I'll get used to these animations one day. So let's get started. All right, so we can go ahead and minimize our slides now. And it looks like our YouTube is still running. That's good news. I'll just kind of double check that really quickly because this is my first time. And then I'll even hop into the chat. So if you have any questions throughout our stream today, please go ahead and type those questions in the chat. But it looks like our chat is definitely working and we have a few live viewers. So again, thank you. Really appreciate you for joining. Uh, let's go ahead and show you how to get to the free learning materials that I provided for you. All right, so you can actually go ahead and get started on my website right here. It's nearfuture.marketing or nearfuturemarketing.com. But once you land here on my website, welcome, you know? So again, the AR Today virtual store, it's finally here. It's a handheld VR shopping experience. Here's a nice video of the previous version of the store, so I'll have to update this video. Uh, but definitely check this out. Let's actually go ahead and click in really quickly. And again, you can get a better sense that, you know, this is a full store. You can walk around in this store. There's all these different things that you can buy and experience. And um, eventually there's going to be some mini games that will allow you to win uh, prizes. Maybe that's a discount. Maybe that's a free shirt. Um, but that's coming soon. But once you're here on my website, you'll see in the top here we have our headers. So we have home products, services, which we talked about earlier, culture, and augmented reality today, which is the name of this meetup. And so right in here, again, you'll see everything about the meetup. 
If you haven't joined the meetup already, maybe you found this event through LinkedIn or YouTube, uh, definitely join our meetup uh, because this is an ongoing group and it's always growing. We've been doing events since 2018 and I never plan to stop. Uh, so here's today's event. And right here where it says episode 26 with today's title, if you go ahead and click learning materials, this will open our public Google Drive, which has all our files. So you can find the files from past meetups. And more specifically, today's meetup is right here, Apple's Reality Kit and AR Quick Look. And so there's three files in here. There's a zip file, which we'll talk about later. There's a dot reality file, which is the focus of today's meetup. And then there is the Reality Kit and AR Quick Look PDF uh, that you can go ahead and download. And so this will be all of our slides. So if you loved our slides today, go ahead and download them. And then more importantly, all of the links I actually did go through and hyperlink these. So you can actually click any of these links. So for these helpful links here, this is going to be the easiest way to get to our helpful links. Let's get started here with the Apple events page, actually, because uh, it's probably pretty important to show you what I'm even talking about. So right now, as I mentioned, WWDC is happening on Monday. And uh, that's a big deal, you know, it happens once a year. And so every time Apple holds a special event, they always release one of these AR quick looks for each event. So it's kind of like a, an augmented reality invite and it's pretty cool, but you can only see it on mobile devices. So right here on apple.com slash events, I believe, yeah, Apple events. This is all you see, you see a cool little logo and it moves around and it's pretty, you know, cool feeling, but it doesn't really you know, it's just, that's it. It's the same thing. It's, you know, just a little video, but there's a better and more immersive way that we can experience this, but we'll have to have the right type of devices. So let's go ahead and open up QuickTime here and I will share my screen, which happens like this. We'll do new screen recording. Uh, oops, actually we'll do new movie recording. There we go. Hey everybody, and then we'll switch this to be the screen of my business phone. Perfect. Uh, so we will say, uh, what? I don't know. <laughs> Not too sure there. Uh, but there we go. So I have my iPhone here. I think it actually looked better like this. Well, no, we'll, we'll leave this full screen. You'll see why. And so notice how this exact same page which maybe I can move, there we go. All right, so notice how this exact same page, it does that whole thing, but at the bottom here, it says view invite in AR. So let's take a look at what that does. When you click that view invite in AR, it will load for a second, and then it should see like a three model there. And look at that. And if I uh, turn my audio up here, and sadly, I don't think the audio, let's see. Yeah, I don't think this is sharing audio. There, there might, might even be an echo, echo now. But, uh, so, so yeah, let's, let's turn that off. Uh, but there's no audio, but this is the event invite in AR. So this is a really basic one, but what I wanted to show you is the fact that it also plays some really cool music at the same time. So unfortunately, you can't hear the music. But on your iPhone, if you go, or iPad, if you go to Google and you type in uh, Apple events, you should be able to access this. And again, what's really cool about this is I can move it around. I can stick my hand in front of it. It does what's called occlusion. So it's already doing some really advanced techniques without any code at all. I can also scale it. So if I want to scale it down and make it really small, there it is. And notice how it also reflects on the surfaces that it's actually pinned to. So really, really cool and basic experience here. But I have some much better examples here, so let's hop over to my next example. Uh, and we'll take a look on my website, actually. So let's go to my website. And on my website, if you go to that services page that we talked about earlier, this is where that screenshot came from. So anytime you host one of these .reality or .usd files on your website, it will automatically have this AR icon on it anytime that person's on an iPad or an iPhone. And what that means is if I tap this burger, the same thing that we saw with that event invite happens with the burger. So again, we have this nice, really juicy, really high quality burger. I can scale it up and make it bigger. If I tap the burger, so let's go ahead and tap it. 
it actually hops up and does a flip. And again, notice the realistic shadows, the realistic lighting. I have the ability to rotate this. I can scale it up. And I mean, look at that. If I had a big juicy burger that was that big, it's bigger than my hand. You know, that's really delicious looking. So that's one example. If we click on the exit here, we'll go to our next example. So this one, again, the sound, uh, you won't be able to hear any sound here, but if we go ahead and tap the trumpet here, this is just another example. So we have this nice, really shiny trumpet. Look at that. I mean, it's very, very beautiful. And what happens is, ideally, when you tap this one, it would make some noise and dance and sing. And we could even add additional animations. Maybe if I wanted some music notes to fly out of the uh, whatever part of the trumpet you call this one, uh, definitely I could do that. So Reality Kit and AR Quick Look is essentially a way that you can share AR experiences without having people download an entire augmented reality app. It's really, really cool. All right, we have one more example here, and this one's really basic. Uh, but this one is a little coffee shop. And so again, if we go ahead and put that out, you can see it's properly mapped to my desk here. It looks like it's actually in the room. I put my hand in front of it, it's in front of it. And more importantly, if I tap, down here, so let's try to move that there. You can see I can also move it to my floor. We scale it up really big, maybe move it back. I can make it, you know, just about life size, and I could probably scale this up even more and more and more. But obviously, I'm inside of my home right now, so it's a little hard to do for my desk. If we click object mode at the top, I can actually just view this as a 3D model as well. So really, really cool feature there. But again, this is all built into the system. This isn't something fancy that you have to do. I mean, it's a little fancy, but it's a lot simpler than building an AR app. And that's kind of why I wanted to host today's meetup because there's so much potential just within these experiences. And of course, the many other things that you can do with AR. So let's show you one last really advanced example. And so again, these are all in our links. So if you go back to our PDF, you'll see these links. Uh, but let's go to AR Quick Look Gallery. You can see it's popping up there. But if we type in AR Quick Look Gallery, which I can barely type, go ahead and click it. Apple has created some really nice examples based on their shows that they have on Apple TV. So if you've watched uh, For All Mankind, here are two different models based on that show, which is a space show. So again, we'll give it a second, let it download the model. That is what the loading screen is for because it's downloading over the internet. <coughs> and notice that these ones did take a little bit longer because they are a lot bigger. So again, very high quality model here. We have really nice reflections, shadows, uh, it looks metallic. If I tap it, it actually spins around, shoots the top off and opens up. And now I can actually explore this hab. So if I click here, I can learn facts about the different parts of the hab. And again, this is like a space station, but remember, this is on a TV show. It's not a real place, but by creating this AR experience, you can really make your users feel like this is a real space and they're really a part of the show. And again, this probably makes people love the show more than ever. I mean, how cool is that to be able to see the airlock that everybody goes through and like walk through? I mean, if I was a little kid when this stuff came out, Man, my mind would be blown. Um, but again, really, really cool how much information we're able to store in this single file. So it's not like multiple downloads. There's no fancy tricks that you have to do. You just click on it and it works. Same thing with the Cosmonaut here. We'll go ahead and put him out. And yeah, there we go. And so again, if I tap this, I'll probably see the animation. There we go. You can actually see how they get into their spacesuits, which again is something that's really, really cool and uh, maybe something you never thought about and you know before seeing that experience. All right, and so you know, there's so many other examples here. I could do this all day, um, but more importantly, let's teach you how to make these experiences. 
So again, there's many examples here. I highly recommend it. And there's also last example. This is what I was looking for. So there's examples with banners. Air Quick Look enables you to add Apple Pay integration or custom actions to engage your users. So there's some really cool next level things you can do with a little bit of code. We won't go into those today, but I do want to at least show you a quick example. If we go ahead and click on this one, Right here, we have this retro alarm clock. And again, we're selling it. Like, I'm looking at it. It looks good from all these different angles. If I go ahead and click the Apple Pay button, uh, and yeah, I think, uh, again, this phone probably doesn't have, or no, yeah, it's a demo. That's probably why I did that. <laughs> it's a demo. Um, but you get the idea. Any AR experience really adds to the experience around the product, around the TV show, around your burgers, around the history of the trumpet. There's so many ways to use this. And again, you would not need to deploy a full-fledged app that has to get approved by Apple and you need a developer to manage. This is something that you can really do on your own with a little bit of elbow grease. So uh, that's it for our iPhone examples for now. Let's go ahead and actually just close that. And then let's get started by talking about the software that you need to start setting up these experiences. So if you read the description before the event, I'm so proud of you because hopefully you downloaded Xcode. And if not, then it's okay. Again, this is not something that you would want to do while I'm doing it. I think this is better to watch the recording and do it on your own. But again, I want to show you exactly how easy it all is. So the first step is you're going to need to download Xcode. So Xcode is an app built by Apple. So on your Mac, we'll go ahead and go to the App Store. And if you don't have a Mac, I'll show you how to do this without a Mac because you can actually do this on your iPhone, your iPad, or your Mac. Uh, but I'll start with Mac because I'm sharing my screen. I'm hosting a whole live stream, so let's do it the proper way. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just type in Xcode. And again, Xcode is Apple's developer tool. It's what you use to build apps. Uh, so it looks like I need to update it. I won't do that right now. But once you've downloaded Xcode, we'll go ahead and launch it. And you'll probably see what I've been working on here. But again, welcome to Xcode. Now, what's really cool about these experiences is it's kind of like a hidden secret. And I think this is why uh, not enough people know about it yet. So if we right click the Xcode app here, so I'll just kind of right click and we go ahead and do open developer tool. There's a few different tools here. There's instruments, simulator, blah, blah, blah. But there's a really important one called Reality Composer. And I think you can imagine what that does based on the name. It helps us compose these reality files. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll tap new document. And let's try to make this full screen, perfect. So whenever you go to create a new Reality Composer experience, there are a few different templates or anchors that you can start with. So there's horizontal, and this is best for tabletop and horizontally based experiences. So exactly what we just saw where I point my phone, I place it on my desk, and I got to view the whole thing on my desk or the floor, that's a horizontal experience. I would say a good 80 to 90% of your experiences should probably be horizontal. Uh, a vertical experience is a vertical experience. So uh, it doesn't make sense. It's like a wall. So if you wanted to hang a painting on a wall, uh, that would be a vertical experience. Uh, that's kind of the main use case there. So again, there's not too many things that we hang on walls, uh, but there's a lot of things that we put on the floor. An image experience means it's attached to a specific image, like a poster or a book. So these are pretty cool, but again, it only works if that picture is in the camera frame. So if you had a book that you just published and you wanted to publish an AR experience alongside the book, or maybe a t-shirt, or maybe a uh, Coca-Cola logo on your, your bottle, whatever your product is, you can actually map this experience to that image. And again, maybe uh, if it's like a, a Coca-Cola bottle, you would know like, okay, if the logo's in the front, then I can place this to the right and this thing to the left, and I can have something pop out of the logo because we know exactly where it is. So that's kind of the idea with image experience. So this is that you know uh, what you're looking for and where it probably is and you know the dimensions and based on that you can do some really cool things uh, beyond what you would do with just a horizontal experience face so 
Face experiences are for augmenting faces. So this is like a face filter, just like you would see in Instagram or Snapchat or anywhere else. Uh, we have face filters that you can create or you can just map something to a face. So if you wanted to maybe have a mask that just maps to that person's face or maybe like a sign above their head that says uh, hello, you know, it's the nicest thing I can think of. Uh, that would be a great way to map something to someone's face or that'd be a great experience to map to their face. All right, very last experience would be an object anchor. So this allows you to anchor your experience to a scanned object, and this is really cool. I think Apple, they showed off some experiences with Lego and I believe Gibson Guitar maybe. Uh, and what they did is they have like a Lego set and you spend all your time building the Lego set and you're like, wow, this is amazing. I can just use my imagination. Well, now you can actually use an AR experience that's mapped to that Lego set that you built and again, based on it being the exact shape, dimensions, and color uh, that we specified when we scan the object, we can create an AR experience. So how can I boil this down? So in the Lego example, let's say you know you have like a Lego castle, right? And again, as a kid, it's really easy to use your imagination and see knights in shining armor, you know, running up and down the hallways of this castle and they're actually not there. Well, now with these object experiences, you could map it directly to that castle. And again, you would see actual knights and horses and sword fights and everything else that happens in a castle happening in that castle. So it's, it's things like this that, again, it allows us to create very specific products and then extend those products even further and create experiences that make people feel like, wow, this is a really special product. Wow, I'm so happy I bought this. Uh, it's, it's proven, I could pull up the research, but it's proven that AR really makes people appreciate uh, whatever that experience is. It's just a little bit easier to experience and just fe it just feels magical, I think is the best way to explain it. So we won't be getting started with an object, a face, an image, or a vertical. We'll actually get started with a good old horizontal. We'll go ahead and hit choose. And that's it, we're right here in Reality Composer. And this is the exact same way that it looks on iPhone or iPad. So if you've downloaded those apps, uh, don't worry, like you're still gonna learn how to use it. All right, and so let's start by selecting this object here. So this is our box. And like any typical 3D software, we have an arrow to move it up and down, left and right, or in and out. I can also rotate it so I can rotate it that way, you can see right now it's snapping, so it's moving every 15 degrees. Uh, if I hover over it from a different angle, so like over here, I can rotate it along the x-axis, which is this red here. And if I look at it from this way, I can rotate it across the z-axis. All right, so really cool, really easy. Notice how it's also casting a shadow down here. So let's zoom in. And you'll see that it's also already casting a shadow. That's something that really is kind of like an advanced feature in the typical AR kit setup. So this is already a great head start uh, because I didn't even have to turn on shadows. Beneath that, we have this box here that says select to edit. So I could change the text here down at the bottom. Oops. And let's change that to uh, just AR today. And we'll just a bunch of exclamation points. And I can even change the font style. So maybe I want it bold and instead of Helvetica, I want it to be Futura. Uh, let's go ahead and hit enter there. There we go. AR today. All right, now that's the really, really basics here. If I click back on this object here, our cube, we can actually give it a name on the right side here. Uh, I'm not sure what this panel here is called. I guess it's our properties. And so let's go ahead and give this a name. We'll just call it our cube. Pretty simple. If I wanted to scale our cube up or down, so you just saw me move the position. So again, if I take this green arrow here, notice how the Y value here is updating as I move that. So that way you can see that these are obviously connected. Uh, same thing for rotation. And then for our scale, I can scale this down or I can scale it up. For the material, right now we're using a plastic material by default, but maybe I can use something more like a car paint and that way it's a little shiny. And then I can even change the color here. So we'll change this to like a nice Ferrari red maybe. There we go. And you can see that we have this nice Ferrari red cube. 
All right. Beneath the look, we have the physics. So let's actually open that up. And to make this participate in our physics, we need to click participate. So let me show you what happens when it does participate. So here's our experience. Our cube is in the air. And on the top right corner here, if I hit the play button, I can play the experience. So we're playing the experience. There's nothing happening. And that's because there's no physics. There's no interaction. So let's start creating some things that can happen here. Uh, so for starters, we'll click on our cube again, and this time we'll click Participates. And the moment you click Participates, we have different motion types. So we have Fixed and Dynamic. Again, if it's left on Fixed, we'll hit Play. It stays in place, but it is a physical object. So think of like a big brick wall that you don't need it to move, but you do need the cars to run into the wall so that you know where the you know cars can't go. Um, so that's what Fixed Motion Type would be. Dynamic does exactly what it sounds like. It makes the cube dynamic and fall and interact with other objects. All right, there's different material types. So there's concrete, which means it's gonna move like concrete, or there's ice, which means it would be a little bit more slippery. So let's play that one more time. You can see maybe it might've slipped a little bit more. Let's hit concrete. Yeah, you see concrete stops really fast and ice kind of slides a little bit really, really subtle, but again, these are things that would have taken quite some time to do with some code. So yeah, find the right material for that object that you're describing. It can be lead, plastic, wood, rubber, so it kind of bounces. Um, different ideas here, uh, but I do think I like ice for now. And then collision shape, and maybe I can make this panel a little bit bigger. It doesn't look like it. So collision shape here, we have automatic, which is just automatically mapping to that object. Box, capsule, spear. So this is the shape that uh, of the physics shape. So when it's running these physics simulations here, let's duplicate this. So I'll right click it and we'll click duplicate. And so now I have two cubes and let's maybe even rotate this one or make it a blue cube. So we'll go back to look, we'll change the material color. We'll make this a nice blue cube. And then I can actually left click and drag this anywhere I need. So I don't need to use these arrows if I just wanted to quickly move it over to the right or the left. Uh, so let's move it here and then let's move it above this cube. And then let's go ahead and hit play. And so notice how these two ice cubes hit each other and then they bounce off in opposite directions. And that's because they're using the physics uh, and they're also using that collision shape. And so I could change that collision shape to maybe make this cube uh, not necessarily feel like it got hit until it, you know, is halfway through, or this is gonna really show in complex shapes. And I think, let's go ahead and add a complex shape so that you understand what I'm talking about. So at the top here, we'll go ahead and click add. And this is also what makes Reality Composer really, really cool. Reality Composer comes with many different 3D objects already. So we have our basic objects, which you've already seen, like our cube and our text. Uh, and we even have some signs and some charts here. So let's maybe drag in the chart. Pretty cool. We have a nice 3D chart now. And again, the, everything I've taught you so far still applies. So I can move this right about here. Make a cool, good looking scene there. Um, but going back into that add menu, there's also different categories. So let's go to activities. Uh, and again, activities has things that are activities like checkers and chess and uh, events has things like balloons and tickets. And you'll notice that these have a cloud icon next to them. That's because they're all in the cloud. So if you want one of these models, you just have to download it uh, or just left click and drag it in. So again, uh, maybe let's replace our red box here. We'll delete our red box. We loved you, red box, but rest in peace. And we'll replace our red box with this cool looking marble here. It's either a marble or a bowling ball, but whatever it is, I like how it looks. So let's scale it up. There we go. And again, I can move this right to where I need it. And this brings us back to those collision shapes because if we look at this one's collision shape, let's make sure it participates. Notice how its default is set to a sphere because obviously it's a spherical object. So uh, the physics shapes, you'll figure it out, but sometimes you might just want to use automatic, uh, but sometimes you, know, you might want to use box just to give a better effect for of what you're looking for. All right, uh, we don't have a ton of time here, so let's keep going. 
Um, and let's go ahead and add one more object here. And we'll add some food because I wanted to show you a really cool feature of Reality Composer. So let's find our grapes. I think this will be a great example. So I have some grapes here. I haven't downloaded them. Let's go ahead and just drag them in. You'll notice that it downloads the grapes right away. Here's our grapes. Now, one thing we haven't talked about in the look section are styles. So right now we have our grapes and they're obviously like a cartoon kind of style. It's not realistic, um, but they do look like grapes. So obviously our users would feel like these are grapes, you know, they would have some fun, it'd be great in a game, but maybe we're going more for realism. Well, some of these models actually have different styles. So if I go to Iconic, you can see it's just more like a textureless 3D model. And if I go to Realistic, you can see I actually get some realistic looking grapes on the vine. And this applies to almost all of the models in Reality Composer here. So if I take our burger example again, or I actually really like the tacos, but let's look at the burger first. So again, we'll click on the burger. Another pro tip, anything that you click on will be what you're zooming in on. So if I click our blue box and I zoom in, notice how it zooms in on our blue box. And if I click on our burger, notice how it zooms in on our burger. So here's our burger. Right now we're using the stylized version, which honestly still looks pretty delicious. I eat it, but I can always click over to realistic and we get a much juicier, much more realistic burger. You can see the individual seeds on the top. I can see the mayo busting out the side and we even have some bacon on it. So again, looks like a pretty delicious burger. Now, we don't have too much time here again, so I want to make sure uh, that I'm planning this properly. So let's move on to a feature called behaviors. So for our burger or our cube or any of these objects, I can click on the object and then at the very top here, I can click behaviors. And this opens our behavior panel, which allows me to visually program what these objects do. So let's add a new behavior here. And there's a few different behaviors. There's tap and flip, there's tap and play sound, tap and add force. You can hide the object, you can wait and show it, proximity and jiggle or custom. Um, let's start with a basic one like tap and flip because you've seen that one before. So we've added our new behavior, it's named behavior. If I wanted to rename it, I can double click it and call it tap and flip. There we go. And then here is our trigger and here is our action sequence. So the trigger is what happens to start uh, the behavior or the action sequence that's going to happen. In this case, our trigger is a tap. I can choose the affected objects. So that means anytime I tap this burger, this stuff will happen. If you wanted to, you can add additional objects. So, you know, it doesn't just have to be tapping the burger. I could tap the grapes or maybe the blue cube. And notice how now in the affected object section, it says three objects. So we'll tap done. And that means anytime I tap any one of those three objects, these behaviors will happen. Let's see what the behaviors are. We can actually preview them here or we can preview the entire sequence. So let's tap uh, play. And that's what's going to happen. All right, so I can change the duration here. I can make that take a long time, like 20 seconds. Let's try that again. And now it feels like our burger is moving in slow-mo. You know, it's really, really epic. I mean, again, it looks so deliciously juicy in this slow-mo that uh, I'm getting hungry. Didn't have breakfast yet, if you can't tell. <laughs> right, so you get the idea here. We can make it move really slow, or I can make it move a lot faster. We can also change the motion type. So rather than a flip, maybe I'd like to see a bounce, or I'd like to see a pop or maybe a blink. Again, there's many different types of really cool motions that we can use that are preset animations that again, you'd have to program if you did this traditionally. And then there's even different styles of the same animation. So let's go back to uh, our flip. And I'll zoom out a little bit because that flip goes pretty high. And let's see the basic flip. All right. And then let's see the playful flip. Oh, it's really playful. And then let's see the wild flip all over the place. So you get the idea here. Apple has done us a lot of favors. They've already pre-programmed many different styles of the same animation. And again, using that duration slider, you can really find that effect that you're looking for. 
Now, if I wanted this to not just happen to the burger, I wanted this to happen to maybe a few objects, again, let's move our iteration down, there we go. I can choose the affected objects, which right now is just the burger, and let's also include our marble, bowling ball, our grapes, uh, and even the charts, just to see something crazy. So let's tap done here. So all of these objects will be affected uh, when this happens. So let's go ahead and play this experience. We'll hit the play button. You can see the physics are working. Our cube just fell right in. And if I tap any of these three objects, we should see some wild stuff happen. So let's start with this one. Look at that. And if I tap this one, the same thing happens. And of course, if I tap the blue cube, the same animation happened. So pretty wild, pretty cool. But we did this in, I mean, literally 10 minutes and I wasted most of my time just showing you uh, all the different features that are available for you. So you can definitely do this in five minutes or less. You can also add additional action sequences. So again, there's so many other things we could do, move and rotate and scale, orbit. Let's just try that one. I think that will be pretty easy to see. Uh, so we'll do that and that and that. Uh, there we go, or whatever, we'll just do that one. And so again, let's go ahead and play this action sequence. And I don't think I necessarily, uh, yeah, I didn't set the center. Oh, there we go, done, choose, done. Okay, that should work, but it might not. <laughs> let's try it. All right, that one didn't work, um, but I did practice this before, so that's fair that it didn't work. Um, but you get the idea, it's relatively, really easy to create these. We don't have too much time, I probably didn't plan this properly, but I can always go over. So let's go ahead and uh, try to wrap this up because I actually don't have enough time to show you how to host these files. So the last thing I'll show you is that we can actually hit send to, and this is another reason to download uh, the Reality Composer app on your iPhone. Once you have the app on your iPhone, you can actually preview these experiences on your iPhone directly from your MacBook. So I'll go ahead and hit iPhone. And I just have to hit accept. And then really quickly here, I'll show you on QuickTime one more time. Click my iPhone. There we go, it's already set up. So this is what it's looking like on my iPhone. Again, you can see that I have the full ability to edit move things around, change this file. So it's not like, you know, I'm done working on it just because I moved over to my iPhone or my iPad. If I click the AR button in the top right corner, it's gonna ask for permission for my camera. I'll hit okay. And then again, it's still downloading some of our 3D models, but you can see here that we're already using what we just worked on in AR. If I hit the play button, there's those physics. And then if I tap that blue cube, Everything we just programmed is happening. Again, the rest of the 3D models are still downloading. They're probably pretty big. Uh, but I mean, how cool is that? We just downloaded, we just created that experience in no time. It's already running on our phone. Let's show you how you can get it to run on the web next. So we'll go ahead and close this one. There we go, disconnect. All right, so we've done a lot of work here. Uh, there's some info that looks like we need to download some content for it to show up on my iPhone. We'll do that next time. Um, so I think this is a pretty great experience, right? I have my properties here. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. We'll go ahead to the top and hit save. And so I'll show you two things that this will create. So uh, demo, we'll just call this demo, live demo. There we go. I'll save it to my desktop and hit save. And so when I save that to my desktop, what you'll see is we get this .rc project. And so this is our project file for Reality Composer. So if I were to completely quit this and just maybe open up this one here, what happens is of course it opens our project right back to where we can edit it. Now, if we go back into the file section and we go to export, I can export this project or the current scene. Let's export, I believe the project. And we'll go to desktop and we'll call it live demo again, and we'll hit export. We'll give it a second to export everything. And then let's go back to our desktop and notice how this time we got this live demo.reality file. And this is the gold, this is what we're here for. So a .reality file, what it does is essentially it keeps all of those sounds, all of those animations, all of the textures, all the 3D models, Combine them all into one file so that you can just share that file. And that's really what the magic is here. 
back in the day, you know, two or three years ago, to share a 3D model, you'd have to share a folder that has all the textures. In fact, I actually downloaded some things. Let's show you an example here. So yeah, here's some examples. I have this OBG, OBJ file, which is the 3D model. If I go ahead and click on it, uh, it should open. So you'll see we have this nice 3D model file. And this is, again, the, the traditional file. So traditionally, you have the file. The textures may not be associated with it. So I'd have to download a separate file that is 400 megabytes here. There you go. But in this file, I have all the textures that I need for that 3D model to look pretty. It's a lot of work to map these models, uh, these textures back to the proper 3D model. And it can be very time consuming. So to have a single file that's called dot reality that just allows you to look at the file and have everything all in one place, it's pretty cool. And you notice how when I click this, I'm on a Mac right now. When I click this on my Mac, because I have Xcode, I can still preview and look at what this does uh, right from the viewer here. If I click right click this and I hit uh, get info, you'll also notice that again, it's a pretty big file. There's no file size limit to dot reality files to my knowledge. So uh, you can add as much as you want here, but remember your users will have to download all of this data when they view the file on your website. So ideally, I would say keep it under seven megabytes, which is actually really easy to do. Uh, but as you start to add in multiple models, you can see this one ran up to 32 megabytes. And I also like that we get a nice preview of the file here as well. So again, really cool that it's a native reality file. I can't wait to see what we'll be doing with these in the future. All right, so um, that's the dot .reality file that we needed. Let's show you how to host this on your website if you do have a website, because that's really what this event is about. So. Uh, we'll go to, I guess we'll go to Squarespace and you can see how my website works. So let's go to Squarespace here. And I'll just go to my website. All right, so welcome to the back end of my website. I actually didn't think about the fact that I'd be showing you this, but uh, let's go to services here and we'll scroll down and I can show you exactly how I set up my reality chip files. So if I hit edit, you can see here that we have some code blocks. So if I click on this, it's some really, really simple code, uh, which I can paste that in. Oh, I didn't even think about that, to paste that into the chat. So we'll paste this in the chat as an example. Um, and I'm like, where's the chat? It's over here. There we go. All right, so I'll paste this just a bunch of code <laughs> as an example. Um, but that's it, is that really is some basic code. You just fill in the blanks. So you don't have to know how to code. We're just going to copy and paste two different URLs into this code. The top URL is the actual uh, .reality file. So if I go to the end of this, you'll see that it's a big burger .reality. And the bottom file is the PNG file or the image file that we see on the website, whether or not that person has an augmented reality device. So on desktop, they just see the picture. On iPhone or iPad, they'll see the picture with that special augmented reality logo automatically added to it. Really, really cool. And so if you're doing this on Squarespace, again, I wanna make sure I'm showing people uh, everything I did. There's no secrets here. So we'll go ahead and hit cancel. I think that's what's going on here. Discard, there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and add one more code block. So on Squarespace, I can just hit plus and I can just add some code. And of course, other web editors may have uh, similar technologies or ways of doing this, but this is what I use, so I'm showing you Squarespace. But all you need to do is paste in these three lines of code, and then you'll get a file that looks like that. And what I did is I stored my files on Google Cloud. So let's go over to Google Cloud really quickly. Google Cloud is not Google Drive, so I tried this for Google Drive as well. Did not work, so Google Cloud is definitely different than Google Drive. But Google Cloud allows you to set up a public-facing uh, storage, basically. It's just web storage that you can set up. You don't have to know how to code. You don't have to do anything fancy. It basically is just like Google Drive, but the difference is it's more on the side of uh, developers, basically. So let's hit search here, and we'll just type in storage. And let's just go right into cloud storage at the top here. 
And so this is object storage for companies of all sizes. So we'll go to console. So I didn't even mention this. Go to Google Cloud. You can start your free trial. I started a free trial. Um, they gave me 300 free credits. I highly doubt I'm going to burn through those just testing out these reality files. So definitely start a free trial. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's, it's pennies um, once you are actually paying for it. So it's not expensive to host a few 3D models. Um, but let's go ahead and go to console. All right, and so in our console here, what I did is I created what's called a cloud bucket. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry, you don't have to know, you just need to follow my instructions. So a bucket here is basically just that. It's a bucket full of data. It's a place for you to just throw things in, just like Google Drive. So I created one called NFM Cloud Bucket Public. That way I know it's public, uh, but you can create yours right here at the top. You would tap create, you name your bucket, you go through all the settings here, Again, it's literally pennies per gigabyte a month. So I'm pretty sure we can all afford this one. Um, but we'll go back to the previous page here because I've already created my cloud bucket. So let's go ahead and open it. And in my cloud bucket, uh, there's one thing that you'll need to do. You'll need to make sure that it's set to public. And if it is set to public, you'll see that here, that it's public to the internet. Um, and I actually have some instructions. Maybe I can paste those in as well. Um, but all I did was that. I just uploaded the Big Burger preview PNG, the Big Burger .reality file, and all those other .reality files, or also a .usdz is basically the same thing. Um, but by uploading these files here, again, they're all public to the internet. So all I needed to do was copy that URL. So again, we'll just copy the URL for something different. Let's do a new one. So we'll do the marble cake here. Uh, I'll go ahead and copy a preview. We'll go back to my services page. Again, I'll just remove the URL that was already there. And we'll paste in the new one. And then same thing for the bottom here. I will remove the, oops, and it looks like I put that in the wrong spot. So let's paste this here. And notice the image should probably instantly change. So right there, you can see I've redirected the link to that image. And then now I just need to redirect the 3D model. So again, I'll backspace this out. And right there in the parentheses, we'll go back to Google Cloud. We'll find my marblecake.reality file here. We'll copy the URL. We'll go back into Squarespace. We'll paste that in. And then that's it. Go ahead and save. And that's literally all you need to do to publish whatever type of experience you've created in Reality Composer to the web. So this is instantly live on my website. If I open that iPhone again, so let's one last time here. File, uh, new movie recording, let it load. There we go. Um, so we'll go here and we'll just go back to my website. Welcome back. We'll go to AR today. We'll scroll down. Oh, wait, sorry, it's in services. There we go. And so now in services, we should see that marble cake right under everything else. And look at that. We have that marble cake.png. We'll go ahead and click it. And again, I have my marble cake. And the marble cake actually does the same thing as the burger, just does a little flip. Uh, but I thought the burger looked more delicious, so I replaced it. But again, I can move this around, I can scale it, scale it down. Can try to eat it, you know, really, really fun. Um, and there's one last thing I do want to show you, and it's how I make the previews here because that's something that's not included for free. So if you're using Mac OS, it's actually really easy to do this. Uh, what you can do is you can take something like uh, our model here. So we'll take our, uh, our dot reality file, sorry. So we'll go back to our desktop. Let's open this dot reality file. So this is the file that we exported earlier once we were done. Again, I'll just make this full screen. I'll find the perfect camera angle for this. And then you'll hit Command Space, or you can hit the, uh, the search bar. So you can hit the search bar at the top, and we'll type in screenshot. And so you just want to take a nice looking screenshot. I would say maybe like 500 pixels by 500, maybe more, maybe less. Uh, but you'll kind of just figure out what you need for your screenshot. But again, I would say probably make sure it's perfectly square. So I'll try to not rush here. Let's do 564 by 5, 
64. There we go. So this is a perfectly squared image, which makes it really easy to use and align on the internet. We'll go ahead and capture that. And then that screenshot goes straight to my desktop. And so what I can do now is I can go to my desktop. I can take this screenshot. I don't even have to look at it. You'll just want to right click it, hover down to where it says quick actions. And this is a newer feature that a lot of people don't realize is included in Mac OS. But you can actually remove the background of any image built into Mac OS. So we'll go ahead and just tap remove background. That creates another image that has the background removed. Uh, and we'll just do live, we'll call it live demo.png. Again, I can take that file. We'll go back to my Google Cloud bucket here. And we'll just drag and drop that file directly into our Google Cloud bucket. There we go. The file was uploaded successfully. Let's copy that URL for that live demo.png. Go ahead and copy it. And again, we'll go ahead and edit this. And I won't change the file because I think it's about time to wrap up here because I'm going to delete this. This doesn't need to be on my website. Uh, but we'll go ahead and change that and hit save. And look at that. There's a nice looking preview of our file. You know what? I think what would be our demo if I didn't actually host it on the internet. So let's really quickly here upload that dot reality file. Again, it is 30 megabytes, so I didn't really uh, optimize it to be super small. Um, but we'll let that file upload. And then once it uploads, which it just did, we'll go ahead and again copy that dot reality URL. We'll head back to Squarespace. We'll edit that block of code here. So we'll edit this. And again, the bottom URL, which is like, or sorry, the top URL uh, is the header reference. And you can also see that it has AR beside it, so that will remind you. But we'll go ahead and just paste in that link. And again, you can see it's the link to our live demo.reality file. I'll tap save. And then now for our grand finale here, we'll open up QuickTime one last time. And let's just refresh the page. And so this time, look at that. There's the live demo that we created right here today. If I go ahead and click on it, again, it's really big. So, uh, oh, looks like it downloaded pretty fast though. I got good Wi-Fi here. But you get the idea. Everything that we just did today is already on the web. It's live, it's working. There's no tricks behind my sleeves. There's nothing that I did here today that you can't do on your own. Uh, maybe while watching this recording. Um, but that's it. That's essentially what I wanted to show you today. Uh, of course, there's so much more to this, but there's only so much I can do in an hour. So again, I really do appreciate you all for joining. Uh, really quickly before we wrap up here, I don't see any questions in the chat here, um, but this is my first time using the streaming software. So let's actually open YouTube here. Oops, I'm not sure why that happened. And uh, let's just double check that there aren't any questions before we wrap things up here. I can do in an hour or so. Again, yeah, it doesn't look like there's any questions. Well, again, I appreciate everyone. I appreciate your time. There's one last thing I'll bring up here, and that's our thanks for watching screen. So let's hit play. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, so thanks for watching everyone. Again, really do appreciate you, really appreciate your time. And uh, I'm just you know so excited about the things that are about to happen at WWDC 23. So I thought it's a really great time to share everything I know about dot .reality files, how to make them, how to share them, and how you can probably do so much more with them uh, really soon. I think, again, it's just really unique to be able to share. Uh, experience like that. One last thing I'll mention, these dot .reality files, you can use them to create games, you can use them to create two-player experiences. There's so much more to do with them. Um, so definitely check out the links here. I didn't really review this link, but there's this link here for reality kit documentation. Definitely check out this link. Let's click it one quick time here. This link goes through the really deep technical side of things, which you won't need based on what I just taught you, but there are some examples at the very bottom here for building games and some other uh, really great examples that go beyond what I showed you today. So definitely check those out, but um, we don't have time for that today, unfortunately, so maybe next time. But again, 
thank you for watching. Oh, there we go. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate your time, and I really look forward to our next meetup. I'm probably going to hold one within the week because I think there's going to be so many announcements uh, on Monday that I'm going to need to address the changes to the industry. So really looking forward to it. Again, if you're going to be at WWDC 23, would love to meet you. Uh, but until next time, everyone, thank you.